So I'm just gonna start this video off by being honest. I have dreaded this video ever since the beginning of the NBA Trade Rewind series. It's been requested many times, but I always pushed it off because I knew how mind-bendingly complicated and convoluted this particular trade was and still is. But this week, I decided to take on the challenge. We've got four teams, 12 different players, four different draft picks, and eight years of NBA history to track all of them through the years. Let's look back at one of the biggest trades in modern NBA history, the Dwight Howard, Andrew Bynum, Andre Iguodala trade from back in 2012. Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video, I'm gonna be doing an NBA trade rewind on a deal that happened all the way back in 2012 but still has a really big impact on the league today. This was a four team deal that primarily sent Dwight Howard to the Lakers, Andrew Bynum to the Sixers and Andre Iguodala to the Nuggets. Although strangely, every single one of those players left those teams after just one year. As always, this video will be split up into a couple of different parts. First, I will talk about the context of the trade back in 2012 and why each team made the deal that they did. Then I'll talk about how each team was impacted by this trade in the years following and then finally I'll discuss how each of these pieces impacts the NBA in 2020 for each of these teams. So first let's talk about where each of these teams were back in 2012. The Magic had been going through the Dwight Howard saga for a while. After making the 2009 finals and winning nearly 60 games in that season and the following, things had dropped off a bit for the Magic and Dwight simply wanted to be in a bigger market. At the time of the trade, it had been made clear for over a year that Dwight wanted to be traded and then he would leave the Magic in 2012 free agency if he wasn't moved before then. And this was all after Dwight opted into an extra year of his contract because of how poorly his trade request was received publicly. Seriously, this entire thing was just a complete debacle. So the Magic were looking for a bit of a reset and wanted to get as much as they could in return for Howard. The Lakers, meanwhile, were looking to build up another championship team after following up back-to-back -back titles in 2009 and 2010 by not making the conference finals in the following two seasons. With Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol both in their 30s, they ideally wanted to move the much younger Andrew Bynum for a more proven and simply better player in Howard to capitalize on their closing but still open championship window. Despite Howard making it known he wouldn't sign an extension prior to his 2012 free agency, the Lakers were confident that they could convince him to re-sign. The Nuggets were hoping that Iguodala would provide them the veteran presence and borderline all-star talent to go along with it that would push their relatively young team, including Ty Lawson, Danilo Gallinari, and Kenneth Reed, towards a conference finals appearance. And for one season, it worked. Iguodala provided them the defense and wing playmaking that they needed, and in one of the most out-of-nowhere improvements in recent league history, the Nuggets won 57 games and were the third seed in the West. However, they fell apart in the first round of the playoffs, making Iguodala's decision on whether or not to re-sign in Denver that much more difficult. The Sixers, fresh off of an eighth seed finish the year before, felt like they needed to make some changes. They did pull off a first round upset of the first seed Chicago Bulls after Derrick Rose went down with an injury and came within one game of making the conference finals, losing to Boston in game seven. But they also recognized that that was about as far as they could go with their current roster. They had intriguing young players such as Drew Holiday, Thaddeus Young, Evan Turner, and Lou Williams, each of them still in their early 20s, and moved the almost 30 year old Iguodala for a young, potentially dominant post presence in the 24 year old Andrew Bynum with the hopes of building towards becoming an Eastern Conference power within a few seasons. So with that covered, what happened to each of these teams and the pieces involved in the years after the trade went through? Well, long story short, for every single team in this trade, things did not go as planned. Howard left the Lakers for the Rockets in free agency after a tumultuous season on a so-called super team in LA, winning just 45 games, which was also their last playoff appearance until this most recent season. Iguodala ultimately decided to leave for the Warriors in free agency, and the assets that the Nuggets got in return via a sign and trade did basically nothing for their future. It worked out very well for Iguodala and Golden State, but Denver was left to slowly build their team back up through the draft, going five straight years without a playoff appearance. For the Sixers, despite trading away not only Iguodala, but also two promising young players in Mo Harkless and Nikola Vucevic, and a first round pick in exchange for Andrew Bynum, you and I have played just as many minutes for the Philadelphia 76ers as Andrew Bynum ever did. 
He struggled with injuries and went on to play just 26 more NBA games total, the cap to a strange career that basically ended at 24 years old. Just a year after the Bynum trade with Sam Hinkie now in place in the front office, the Sixers moved Drew Holiday on draft night in a trade that infamously started the process, although the failure of the Bynum trade was arguably what started the team on that path in the first place. For the Magic, they actually got a few usable pieces in the Howard deal, which I'll talk about later, and did the best in this trade relative to the other teams, although that isn't really a very high bar. However, they haven't been able to come close to the success they experienced while Howard was in Orlando, with just one playoff appearance since trading away Dwight in 2012. Now let's get to the actual trade back in 2012, and then we'll talk about where all these pieces ended up in 2020. Back then, the Magic received Aaron Aflalo, Al Harrington, a 2013 second round pick that became Romero Osby, a 2014 first round pick that became Dario Saric, Christian Ianga, Josh McRoberts, a 2017 second round pick that became Wesley Owundu, Mo Harkless, Nikola Vucevic, and a 2018 first round pick that became Landry Shamit, and they traded away Dwight Howard, Earl Clark, Chris Duhon, and Jason Richardson. The Nuggets received Andre Iguodala in exchange for Aaron Aflalo, Al Harrington, a 2013 second round pick that became Romero Osby, and a 2014 first round pick that became Dario Sarch. The Lakers received Dwight Howard, Earl Clark, and Chris Duhon in exchange for Andrew Bynum, Christian Ianga, and Josh McRoberts. The Sixers received Andrew Bynum and Jason Richardson in exchange for Andre Iguodala, Mo Harkless, Nikola Vucevic, and a 2018 first round pick that became Landry Shaman. And now let's look at this trade in 2020. For the Magic, Aflalo was traded in 2014 for Evan Fournier and Devin Marble, both of which are still on the team. Al Harrington was waived by the Magic in 2013, and Osby never played in the NBA. Saric was traded in 2014 as a pick on draft night, along with other pieces for the pick that would become Alfred Payton, and Payton was traded in 2018 for the Suns for a 2018 second round pick that became Jared Vanderbilt, and that pick was later traded as were the subsequent pieces, none of which resulted in anything for Orlando. Iango was waived in 2012, McRoberts was traded in 2013 for Hakeem Warwick, who was later waived, Wesley Wundu is still on the roster, Harkless was traded in 2015 for a 2020 top 55 protected second round pick that is unlikely to be conveyed, Vucevic is still on the roster, and the pick that became Landry Shamit was one of the other pieces involved in the draft night trade to move up and select Alfred Payton. So the trade in 2024 Orlando is Evan Fournier, Devin Marble, Wesley Wundu, and Nikola Vucevic in exchange for Dwight Howard, Chris Duhon, and Earl Clark. For the Nuggets, Iguodala was traded in 2013 along with other pieces for a second round pick that became Thomas Welsh and Randy Foy. Welsh was later waived, while Foy was traded in 2016 for a handful of assets that were all either waived, left as free agents, or never made it to the NBA, meaning that this trade has no impact in 2020 for the Nuggets. For the Lakers, Howard left as a free agent in 2013, Duhon was later waived, and Clark also left as a free agent in 2013, meaning this trade has no impact on the Lakers in 2020. For the Sixers, Bynum left as a free agent in 2013 and Richardson retired in 2015, meaning that this trade has no impact on the Sixers in 2020. So at the end of the day, this was a classic trade that ended up becoming a whole lot of nothing for pretty much every single team. The Magic do still have a few nice pieces on their current roster, but outside of Vucevic's all-star appearance last season, they aren't anything all that game-changing. And they're the only team in the deal that has anything to show for this trade now in 2020. However, that isn't to say that this wasn't an impactful trade, and you can argue that it's one of the most impactful trades of the last 20 years in the NBA. The Magic have started to build an intriguing defensive team with playoff aspirations in the East. The Lakers went into a full rebuild a few years after the failed Dwight Super Team, leading them to landing LeBron James in free agency. The Sixers started the process and have built a really good young team, albeit with plenty of missteps along the way and the Nuggets have transformed themselves into one of the best organizations in the league ever since Iguodala left. And I'd imagine that this will be a trade that we look back on throughout the years as one of the craziest, most complicated, and ultimately most interesting trades in NBA history. And yeah, there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video, and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.